some of the longest parts, but definitely the most rewarding, which is the hazard stripes, uh, and my favorite part of the whole color scheme. Now, this can be used for other applications, obviously. So, uh, Iron Warrior armies uh, on vehicles, their uh, dozer blades, really on anything you'd like, this can be applied. And what we're aiming to do is not just have flat yellow and black. So that looks nice, but um, I like to have a bit more graduation in my colors, especially with the yellow, have more of a, a faded effect. It, uh, it comes up really nice and matches off with the highlighting that we've done with the reds. So um, let's get stuck into it. First off, you need to tidy up the plates that you want to spray. Also, what we're trying to do here is we're aiming to replicate the highlights we've applied with the reds in the same way with the blacks and yellows. Step one, we're starting with a dark reaper mid-tone, aiming for the top two thirds of the plates. It's a really nice dark kind of blue gray, which really sets a really good foundation for the black. Just bear in mind while you're applying this color to the black, it is a dark color on a dark color, so it can be hard to see any progress, but just hang in there. Step two is the highlight for the black armor plates with an equal part mix of Dark Reaper and Fenrisian Grey, aiming for the top one third of the plate as always. This is, um, will finish off the black and it looks quite nice, adds a lot of depth um, and it would be good, look, you could use this for any black armor plates on vehicles. I think it looks really nice, that kind of bluey grey highlight. <laughs> Step three, we're applying the stripes with masking tape. Uh, excuse my noggin for getting in the way. Uh, wow, I can literally count my gray hairs. Anyway, this requires a steady hand and a sharp hobby knife. Uh, I'm not sure how other people do it. I used to do it with scissors, but that drove me nuts trying to get it straight. I found this the easiest way to get everything reasonably straight with enough concentration. And I cut a heap of stripes at once, so that then if I do have a bit of variation in the width, I can pick the ones that I want for what I want on different plates. I might want slightly thicker width on the bigger plates. Uh, I quite, well, I aim for uh, two millimeter wide stripes, but you know, personal choice, up to you what you want to do. Um, applying the tape, I pick the middle of the plate, uh, or a middle corner, if that makes sense, um, and then aim for a roughly 45 degree angle. And that acts as a guide um, for all the other stripes. Um, take your time, do it right, it will pay off uh, when you're done, trust me. Um, as for the type of masking tape, uh, I can't recall what this tape was. That I've had it for ages. It's a very thick re reel of tape. Um, so I'm not even halfway through it. It's, uh, I'd aim for just a, a one that isn't super tacky. Uh, you don't want it to, but you want it to be able to stick so that it's not coming off, obviously, when you're airbrushing that would drive me nuts. Uh, People have mentioned that sometimes paint will peel. Uh, I haven't had that problem myself, uh, but that's something to watch out for. I'd be aiming for probably painter's tape, um, which is designed, you know, to go on walls and stuff and still come off and not take the paint with it. Also, something I forgot to mention at the start of this step, and it's a very important point, is you should let the paint from the previous steps fully cure before you start putting masking tape on. I normally leave mine overnight. <laughs> Now that we've got all our stripes done, it's on to the base colour of Mournfang Brown. Uh, this will be the base for the yellow stripes, obviously. Yep, super boring, but uh, yeah, make sure you get good coverage. Step five is the mid-tone for the yellow, which you were using 
moon yellow from Vallejo. And that's what we're aiming to do is to cover most of the plate with this yellow. However, leaving like the edges with very much that brown or fading into a brown, that gives a, a heap of depth. And also this will take some time because um, a lighter color like yellow, especially a bright one like this going onto a base of brown, um, it takes multiple um, layer, thin layers to build up to a nice yellow. You will find it won't get to the vibrance that you would expect and that's due to that dark brown base color. Almost the final step and this is the final highlight for the yellow which is an equal part mix of moon yellow and bone white from Vallejo. You're aiming for obviously the top one third of the plate um, and just the bone what I find the bone keeps the yellow toned down and that's what helps provide that faded effect. If we just put white in and mix that with the yellow it would be like a kind of lemony more more lemony yellowy I'm not sure how to explain that but find it doesn't quite work as well. All right, the unmasking. This is awesome, I really love this bit. Uh, grab some tweezers and carefully peel back those uh, masking tape strips. I do this straight away after I've finished airbrushing just to reduce the amount of time that the tape is on the paint. Uh, I find that the paint is dry enough from the airbrush anyway, so I don't have never really experienced any problems where the paint will uh, run or anything after I've, I've taken the strips off. Anyway, I think the end result is worth the effort, uh, and yeah, enjoy. So there you go, uh, that is an extremely uh, satisfying uh, part to complete and uh, just the addictiveness of taking off those strips and so forth is just, oh, I could do it forever, anyway. Um, so you'd be thinking that now we have get kind of down to the downhill run, you know, that you start to take shape, the colours are um, coming together, however, uh, if you've done Titanicus models before, you'd be aware of this. For those that haven't, brace yourself. We're hitting the trim. Uh, it's trimming for days, so that's in the next video. So um, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs>